So Wargaming announced that they're going to be removing several ships from uh, the game, at least to purchase. Uh, you'll still be able to keep them in your port, obviously, and play them if you have them. But they're removing them because they're too popular. And, well, there are certain cases where this is probably the case. Um, I think part of it is they're just, some of them aren't fun to play against. Uh, and I think some of them are a little bit too overpowered. And the stats won't necessarily back this up. But when a good player is playing some of these ships, it's it feels more power more overpowered than some of the other ships of the same tier of the same class playing um even if it's a good player so a good example of that is thunder thunder is just um kind of just disgustingly strong in how um good its high explosive is and obviously it has good ap as well but i think the main problem with it is the high explosive spam for max range is just incredible and it's incredibly strong so and it's really really frustrating to play against so uh first before i get into the battleships and that because as we all know i'm mainly a battleship player um there is one ship that is a dd so the small end is getting taken out even though it's only been available for purchase for a very short time i believe so that's an interesting one because this ship, I don't really see too many of them around, but I think part of the issue is Wargaming is noticing that it is overperforming in, um, especially win rate, because you get a radar and a heal and crazy guns, and it's, it's a very strong ship. And um, if you're someone who's thinking that they're wanting to be or is a competitive destroyer player, um, it's just necessary. You have to have this ship. So if, if you're thinking, oh, which one of these should I get before it leaves? Um, I'm going to be touching on all of these, which why I think you should get a specific ship over the others. Um, small one's a really easy one because it's just required for competitive. Um, I don't think Thunder is really co required for competitive. And of course, tier nine and tier eight, um, we don't really have competitive at those tiers. So that's kind of not a large point. Um, so I think Smallland is the main one that I would argue for competitive reasons to get it. Um, but if you want just a really strong DD in randoms, uh, it's also that as well. Um, but yeah, I don't have that ship. I've just been talking to some clanmates that do have it and who run competitive. That's kind of my reasoning behind that statement. So now let's get into the Thunderer. Um, I talked about it earlier. It's just kind of really bad to play against. And I don't think it's particularly healthy for the game, and I think that's part of the reason they're pulling it out. Um, the reason you would get this ship over the other ones, now Thunder is a coal ship, so I think that um, that has some merit in which ones you're going to pick. And so it's essentially Georgia or Thunder if you have to choose, because they're both coal. And the reason I would pick Thunder is if you're looking to mainly play at tier 10. Um, and you're looking for a ship that is just the strongest ship in its class at that tier. I think um, Thunder is probably the best battleship in this game because you have incredibly accurate AP when necessary. And for the times where ships aren't broadside, you have the best high explosive in the game where you have basically guaranteed fires, you have the ability to deal around 10 to 15,000 damage per volley the dispersion's amazing. You get um, essentially built-in Conqueror Legendary mod with that ship. So your rudder shift is amazing. Your turret traverse is amazing. Your concealment is amazing. Um, you also get a defensive fire, which really doesn't do much. Um, I played it to get today against a couple of uh, CVs and it didn't really do much. So that's not really a reason to get it. Um, of course, it's got the vulnerability of 32mm armor and not a super heal like the Conqueror. It just has a regular heal. So I think the guns more than make up for that compared to Conqueror. And I think Thunder is a very good ship. And you can play it AP only very reliably. And it's just a really fun experience because you're generally punishing ships when they go broadside because of how accurate it is. And in fact, it's the most accurate battleship at tier 10. There's nothing more accurate. Even Yamato Legendary Mod 
is not as accurate as this ship is. So that's the reasons I think you would want to get a Thunder. Now we're gonna move on to the Georgia. And Georgia is, I think, one of the more unique ships on this lineup. I think Georgia is probably the ship you can have some of the most fun in. Um, it's either Georgia or Massachusetts, I would say, are the most fun here. And they're for very similar reasons. Obviously, they both have really fun secondaries that go 11.3 kilometers. They're very accurate. They light a lot of fires. Um, I think Georgia is better if you struggle against uh, angled ships. And of course, Georgia has Tier 9 Matchmaker. And Tier 9 Matchmaker, well, sometimes isn't great, you know, when you're fighting Tier 10s and Tier 10 carriers. There's days where you get only Tier 9 games, where you're top tier every day, or every game of the day, and it's amazing. So I think that's kind of um, the biggest reason to get Georgia, is that amazing matchmaker. Um, Georgia, of course, has an incredibly fast top speed, especially with speed boost going I think 39 knots something stupid like that and it has very good concealment um, for the size of the ship and the firepower the guns are to a, sorry 457 millimeter so they overmatch 30 millimeters of armor which is generally cruiser armor and it really punches ships hard with its 15,750 alpha I believe and it's just a fun ship I find it a little bit squishy as in, it takes a lot of damage at weird angles. It's got a very large superstructure that eats AP pens. Um, but you get the super fast heal cooldown to compensate, where your heal comes up every 40 seconds. George is a great ship. I've been intending to do a review style on that ship, but I guess it's going out. But maybe I'll still get, a, get around to one of those before the ship really leaves in 10.1. But um, it's a very good ship. But its competition is, well, Massachusetts and Ohio. And I think those two ships are a lot tankier. I think Georgia has the speed to get into positions that are very interesting. But I think Ohio and Massachusetts can survive a lot more damage because it's super. the superstructure on Georgia just takes too much damage, I think. It's really weird. It just feels like it takes more damage that's not i don't have stats to back that up but that's just kind of what my experience has left me feeling like so george is a great ship and for coal i mean it's awesome because you get coal for free so if you have to choose between georgia and thunderer for coal i would say get thunder if you're looking for the best ship you can possibly get get georgia if you're looking for a fun secondary speedy brawly ship um George is a lot of fun. A lot of fun to fly around the map at 39 knots in a battleship that overmatches cruisers. It's great. The reload's amazing. It's actually one of the most accurate battleships as well, because it also, along with the Thunder, gets a more super cruiser or battle cruiser type dispersion. So it's not on the battleship um, wide dispersion chart, really. It gets a lot tighter dispersion, which is really nice. And I've been in the background here showing you a Georgia clip. Um, and I'll have a Massachusetts clip after this. And it's it's a good ship. It's just really good. Um, now we're going to move on to the Massachusetts. Massachusetts leaving, which is really sad because this is my go-to recommendation for a premium battleship. It's just that good. It, it's so fun. It has all the strengths that I listed for Georgia aside from the speed boost and the overmatching guns. But you get... Um, you get North Carolina guns, essentially, on the Massachusetts, and it's amazing. While the ship has worse Sigma than North Carolina at 1.7 compared to 2.0, it has a better minimum dispersion than the North Carolina, and that's where the shells um, can be more accurate than North Carolina at their most accurate. Of course, they're less likely to go there. Sigma is all about the likelihood of being at the center of the dispersion reticle. But the minimum dispersion of the Massachusetts is actually really good in comparison to, say, the North Carolina or the Alabama. So that's where you get this kind of weird scenario where Massachusetts has 1.7 Sigma, but it has way better dispersion than other 1.7 Sigma ships. It feels more like 1.8, 1.9 
if I had to put a finger on it. Um, and of course, you get amazing concealment, the cool secondaries, the amazing fast heal cooldown. It's a very good ship, very fun. You get great torpedo protection, you get really good maneuverability. Massachusetts is one of my favorite ships in this game. Um, and to prove that, I mean, on my I have a Russian account um, on the Russia server, and I literally have a Massachusetts and that's it's on there to go brawl. It, it's 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 just fun. Massachusetts is, I think, the most fun on this list of ships being removed, because tier eight is awesome. Because sure, you fight against tier tier tens sometimes, you fight against tier nines, but when you're in that top tier, wow, Massachusetts is amazing. Tons of fun, and. There's a reason I've been recommending it to people as the battleship premium to buy at tier 8. Now, we're going to talk about Alaska yet. And Alaska is, I think, very strong for tier 9. I, I could see this ship at tier 10, quite honestly. And it's just that good. <laughs> um, you get... Uh, nine 305 millimeter guns with improved pen angles like a Des Moines so you can just spam AP at things and pen them even at weird very sharp angles the trick to the Alaska is getting used to its arcs um, the ship is balanced out by it having really poor shell velocity but at closer ranges that doesn't matter um, you get a radar a hydro you're a menace around a capture zone DDs hate having to deal with you your citadel's below water, so you're rarely getting citadeled if you're forced to turn out to people. You've got enough armor to bounce, um, auto bounce 380 millimeter guns, so like Borgone, John Bart, Turpets, Bismarck, sh sh ships like this, you can just bow into them and they can't deal any damage to you unless they shoot HE or hit your superstructure. It's just a very strong ship. I think Alaska is one of the strongest ships at tier 9. And. It's, I think, probably one of the best ships for solo carrying. And what I mean by that is being able to help your DDs, to control a cap, to kill DDs, then to be able to tank and brawl against cruisers and kill cruisers, and also be able to kill battleships and shrug off battleship hits. It's just that good against every single class. I never feel like... I'm in a situation in Alaska where there's nothing I can do. Alaska is one of those ships where you feel like you always have the ability to impact whatever game you're in. So I think, um, well, Alaska being free XP, it's matched up against the Smallland. So I would probably get Alaska over Smallland. Well, I have, obviously, because I don't have a Smallland. Um, I haven't played Smallland, to be fair, so keep that in mind. If you're a DD player, I think you'd love Smallland. I've seen my clanmates do some disgusting things in them. And of course, it's a mandatory thing if you're playing Destroyer in a uh, competitive scene. We'll see if that changes with the ship being removed from sale. It's highly likely that rules, um, rule organizers for Kings of the Sea and that will look at a ship being removed from sale and it be not being able to be purchased anymore as a reason to remove it from the competitive table. Um, but for now, assuming it stays in the competitive rotation, Smallland is a must-have for competitive destroyer cap. I think Alaska is going to be the better pick for more people, just because of how fun it is. And of course, like I mentioned with Georgia, Tier 9 is a lot more fun to play than Tier 10. The meta at Tier 10 isn't actually that fun right now. And if you get into those top tier Tier 9 games, which happen quite frequently, I think that is where you want to be. And... Thunder Georgia, like I said, that's coal. So the fun ship is Georgia. The better ship, because Thunder is the best battleship in the game, is Thunder. But I think Georgia's more fun. And of course, Massachusetts you can buy. Right? That's just straight up real money. And I think Massachusetts is one of the more fun ships you can buy in the, in the premium shop. Now I know you can buy the Georgia for real money as well. So if you maybe have to choose between Thunder and Georgia and you're willing to spend some money, maybe get both. Buy the Thunder with your coal and then use real money. I think they're around $100 in the shop. At least I think that's Canadian dollars, so I don't know how much that is in American. But uh, maybe buy the Georgia there or the Massachusetts, a little cheaper kind of thing. But 
It's too bad that some of these ships are leaving because they're some of the most fun ships, right? I love secondary battleships, Georgia, Massachusetts, Ohio. These are some of my favorite ships to play, is this American premium secondary line. So it's too bad that people aren't going to have access to them in the future, but if you can get them, they are my favorite ships to play in the game. I find them the most fun. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope this was informative to my opinions on these different ships. Um, I would recommend maybe hopping on the 07 Discord and asking some of our competitive DD players um, about what their thoughts are on the small end, because like I said, I don't have it. I was just talking with some friends in my clan to see what that ship is like. So thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a good day.